Welcome back to the Motorhome Map podcast. I'm Keith Gooden, and here's the man who put Pert in expert. It's Motorhome Matt Sims. Here I am. You're the, you're the ex in expert. That's right, I tell you. It's nice to see you. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Good to see you as well. In today's episode, we're talking in depth about habitation checks on your motorhome and why you should have one. Mm. Uh, first of all, let's uh, plunge into the news, shall we, Matt? Yeah. Uh, the Caravan Camping and Motorhomes show starts tomorrow. I know, yes. We're on site tomorrow. It's exciting. We're on site en masse as well. There's about a dozen of us going. Uh, we are we have various stands for our shop that leisureshop.com plus the podcast team are there i'm there with maddie and jordan and we'll be doing a number of interviews throughout the week and come and say hi on our stand as well in hall four jude's on the stand all week bless her she'll be holding the fort <laughs> it'll be fantastic to see you there it will. um our tickets still available there are some tickets available there's a code as well if you've not bought your ticket yet use the code matt m-a-t-t at the ticket checkout, the website for tickets is ccmshow.co.uk. Fantastic. And uh, you're on the Advice Centre, aren't you? Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you're coming to the show then, come to the Advice Centre in Hall 5. And if you've got a question, you can ask me face-to-face. Uh, but come and say hi anyway. Uh, and there are people on the, on the Advice Centre throughout the week, and I'm there Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And it's advice about motorhomes and camping and caravanning. <laughs> yeah. Not your general that, advice about... That your, horrible rash. Your I love life. Can't help with that. <laughs> no. And how should people get in touch? So you can do that at our website, motorhomemat.co.uk. In fact, you can submit a question there as well. I'll go forward slash ask Matt. If you've got a question for me while I'm at the show, uh, then you can submit it there as well. But can we ask a favour? Please, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, would you leave us a review? It takes only a few seconds to leave a five-star review and a comment as well. We love reading those. It really helps spread the awareness of the podcast. And if you are watching on YouTube, then leave a comment there as well. We love to get them. Thank you. Fantastic. And if, by the way, you're recording a question for us to use on the podcast, uh, your name, please, and where you're from. We do like to know where you're from. Uh, that would be very handy, wouldn't it? It's really interesting to know where people live. And then we'll try and work out where they are as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that website, uh, one more time for those tickets for the show, which starts tomorrow at the NEC. It's ccmshow.co.uk. And the code that you put in to get your discount is... Matt. M-A-T-T. M-A-T-T. And we will see you there. Right then, the meat of the podcast, the potatoes of the podcast, habitation <laughs> check. I thought you were going to say the vegetables of the podcast. No, that's you and me. <laughs> that's you and <laughs> yeah. us, yeah. Habitation checks, yeah. yeah. Why do I need one? Why should I do one? What possible advantage is there in it for me? It's going to cost me money. It, well, I'm afraid, yeah, often it does cost you money unless you've done a deal with the dealer where the, you get them for free. The, the main benefit of one is really peace of mind. This is about safety checking your motorhome or caravan uh, and... Uh, making sure that it's operating safely and as it should. Um, not only is stuff going to get noted that's maybe broken um, and get repaired, uh, but you're going to maintain the warranty on the vehicle. If it's a new motorhome or caravan, it's got a manufacturer warranty on it, then you have to have one every year to maintain that warranty, particularly around water ingress. Now, many manufacturers have a 10-year water ingress or damp warranty on the vehicle when you're talking about water ingress you mean leaks leaks you? yeah water getting leaks. in and if it's a motorhome that does contain wood some still do increasingly few but some still do then that wood absorbs that water uh, and it's it can get very expensive very quickly to repair so having that habitation check done every year is a requirement of the manufacturer uh, you have to pay for it uh, but they require you to get it done it gets logged with their service uh, center uh, and they will then honor any repair that needs to happen now most mo motorhomes and caravans have a two or three year warranty on all the appliances and the fixtures and fittings often the damp warranty increasingly they've gone from five years to ten and in an increasing number of manufacturers are offering longer warranty periods because the build quality has improved and the materials have changed yeah there's less wood in them um, so a lot more uh, plastics or composites being used which of course the water still gets in but it doesn't get absorbed and doesn't therefore do the damage that it used to do years ago and i actually went up to our local business called bristol caravans 
and Oakley, who owns it, is a very old friend of mine. They are a registered uh, service centre for motorhomes and caravans, and I think they're a brilliant example of what great looks like. So Oakley and I have spent many hours discussing habitation checks and how we can kind of change how they're being done. Uh, We're both advocates and are very passionate about a habitation check really serving the consumer because people say well I can do this myself you know you're only checking the drawer runners are working that the curtains are rolling and the doors are opening okay sure that's part of it but actually there's a real technical level of expertise needed uh, and inspection needed to make a habitation check really really worthwhile uh, so what does good look like well A service centre that's a part of an approved workshop scheme, the AWS, or the MCEA, the Mobile Caravan Engineers Association, they are great badges of honour. Lots of mobile guys are parts of these organisations, and Bristol Caravans are a member of the AWS, the approved workshop scheme. And manufacturers will need you to go to one of these places in order for that habitation check to be recognised by them. And they're good. They're really good. But... My question of Oakley is, what does great look like? Well, great looks like uh, we can drill into the detail of all of the areas of the AWS uh, habitation service. But um, for me, why, why have a habitation? This is your holiday home. This is your home on wheels. And then you're going to take it down the motorway or down a bumpy old track and it's going to rattle around. So you've got all that movement of all those things inside. So how do you know everything is still good and working correctly? If we're thinking about gas, you know, gas can go bang and and CO can kill people. Um, If we're thinking about mains electric, you can get a shock. So it's really important that all of those safety critical elements are checked as well as does the furniture work correctly? Um, or uh, the other issue that we that we talk about and is is uh, a high level discussion in this industry is water ingress. So again, making sure that all of your water seals are correct, everything's working correctly, um, and having that damp report so that you know that it's dry inside. There we are. And damp, of course, is a big factor in any motorhome. It's the enemy of a motorhome or caravan. And it can get very expensive very quickly. Yeah, um, a leak in anything, your house or your motorhome, your yeah. caravan, whatever. Small amounts of water do big amounts of damage. And they if do. you leave it, a, a, a fix of a 50 or 100 pounds can become a 1,000 pounds. Really quickly, Before yeah. you know it. Well, we did a whole episode on damp in you know, water ingress in a motorhome. Uh, with another local company, MJB, and and they were showing us some of the damage that it can do, and really quickly as well. Of course, a a habitation check is a moment in time. At that point of the check is the point that, you know, you've got that information. Things can change. So, you know, being aware of leaks and so on, don't leave it. Go and get it to an expert as quickly as you can. Uh, And I I speak to people that say, well, I can do my own damp check. In fact, I've seen on Facebook recently people going off and buying a kind of budget damp meter or a damp meter in a supermarket, which to us in the trade, they are budget. They cost 10 or 15 pounds. The reality is they are going to go off and do their own damp check on a motor and they're looking to buy. They don't know what to check for or even where to check for it. And there is a skill to this. There's a real knowledge. You know, a certain make and model of motorhome will come in to us for a service or habitation check. We know exactly where to look for the damp because we've done hundreds of them in the past. And, you know, different models have different issues. Uh, and cheap motorhome, uh, sorry, cheap damp meters are not the way to go and do your own damp check. A, a protometer, this is the meters that we use, will tell us how much damp. So up to 15% this is the industry standard, is fine. That's normal. And, of course, you want to be doing one at room temperature as well. You want to make sure the motorhome isn't at minus two when you do the damp check, and you want to make sure it's aired so you're giving it a fair chance and you're not doing it on a really, really rainy, wet day. You know, these are all factors that will affect the damp check. But 15% is fine. Anything over that needs further inspection. A supermarket damp meter will just tell you it's damp. You know, and it's probably too late by then. Uh, and... You know, companies like Bristol Caravans, they're using damp meters that are surface meters, which don't leave any mark on the vehicle. They cost seven hundred pounds. Yeah, you know, they're really not cheap. Um, if you instead, if you ever go and look 
for a used motorhome or caravan and you see pairs of holes about a, a fingernail apart all around the windows, that's a sign that it's had a damp check in the past. And as engineers, we try and use the same holes because you know they do impact the wood board, in, the wall board inside the motorhome or the caravan. So look for holes and that's a sign it's had a damp check. But I asked Oakley his view on cheap superstore damp meters. So what would you say to someone looking at buying a £10 damp meter from Aldi? Oh, what would I say to them? I'd say it's probably a bit like a computer, rubbish in, rubbish out. You know, you, you, need, you need quality equipment if you're going to do a quality job. If you're looking at a motorhome that may be £50,000, I don't know, secondhand, 30, 50, whatever, they're expensive, they're expensive assets now. Um, are you gonna are you gonna rely on a five ten pounds damp meter for that? Yeah. We we have customers who come in and they think everything's okay, um, and it's it's a real it's a very difficult conversation. You complete a damp report, you can't smell damp in the early stages. No. Um, so you complete the damp report, you find damp, and the customer has bought the vehicle in good faith thinking oh this is good i did the right thing i maybe bought a cheap damp meter it's thousands of pounds the big issue though is knowing where to look isn't it that's the key and there are certain brands of motorhomes as you and i both know will drive into your workshop and you'll go gosh i'm going to be looking for the dry bits mm. and there are other vehicles that are 10 15 years old and you think well i'd be hard pressed to find any damp in this mm. Mm. that's certainly been my experience what what's your experience <sighs> I think you're right. There are a variety of vehicles that are out there. Some some are more prone to water ingress than others, um, but it's all repairable. So the key the key to this conversation is have a damp check, which is part of your habitation service every year. If you can catch water ingress early, it could be a few hundred pounds to repair something, replace a seal. If you catch it late it's thousands of pounds mm. it is such a big difference in in price point um yeah it's it's have the service done regularly and and then take action on what the findings are we're talking about habitation checks today on the motor home mat podcast we've talked about leaks uh, matt and as you say water ingress but what about yeah. the big killer carbon monoxide well that's the danger isn't it of course every motorhome camper van has appliances or flames that generate co even the hob uh, has a, a co output the boiler uh, the fridge they all generate carbon monoxide and it is of course the silent killer we've talked about it before haven't we um, and yep. how, how dangerous it can be. We have, and if you're in an enclosed space and carbon monoxide is released into the atmosphere, you don't notice, it, it's, it doesn't smell of anything, doesn't taste of anything, you just go asleep and you never wake up. And mm. I'm not overstating that. No, no, that's right. It, as you say, it's a silent killer. Uh, and how do you know you've got it? You know, how do you know you've got unsafe amounts of it in the motorhome? And this is a really, really key part of any habitation check. In fact, Oakley has a really interesting tool that I refer to as his CO sniffer. Um, <laughs> and he, got, he told me a little bit more about it. When I came into this industry uh, in 2012, I asked people, what, what is the test for a gas flame burning correctly how do we know something's burning correctly um, and and the reaction I got from the industry at that stage was well is the is the flame blue well my blue is going to be different to your blue so which of us is correct you know is is, is yours burning correctly so I turned the question around and I asked people that I was engaging with in the industry and I said well okay, that's what this industry does. What about a care home? How do they know that the appliances are burning correctly? Um, what would you do in a children's nursery? You know, we're talking about the same type of uh, methodology, um, the same type of uh, situation. We're burning a carbon fuel and we want to know, is it burning cleanly? Um, so I, I looked at those industries and they were using the sniffer, as you, as you kindly, <laughs> kindly uh, called it. In this case, we've got a, a, cane, <clears throat> a cane meter, and we can then uh, use this uh, and 
and take a sample of the gas from the flue. So the flue is like the chimney on your fireplace. Yeah. So to, it's going to take a sample and then that sample will allow us to say, OK, how is this appliance burning? It's a bit more scientific than what colour is the flame. And in some modern appliances, you can't see the flame. So how can you even do that test? So if you're, if you're booking a service, maybe a good question is how are you going to test my carbon monoxide, carbon CO readings on my appliances and see what the, see what the answer is. Uh, if they talk about the colour of the flame is blue, I, I suggest thank them kindly and go and find somebody who's invested in equipment and can give you a printout of something that says this is this is what your appliance is burning at this particular stage. But that is the industry requirement, isn't it? This is the flame blue. Um, we're talking about great, and this is the level that that we're at. Yes. We, we we look to to replace um, replace a view that that is not scientific with something that is a bit more black and white and presumably this is something that other dealers are not doing is that is that fair to say um or repair shops i should say and service centers i think it's better to say we see we see service sheets from other uh, from other people in the industry when the vehicles come in for a service with us uh, not all of them would have uh, a cane meter reading that has got uh, a CO report with it. Um, so this 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 is our standard, and which I think is great. I do too. I think that's fantastic. I think that's mm. a great innovation. Mm. There we are, cane meter. Do you know what? I'd never even heard of one. No, I'd never heard of a cane so, meter either. I mean, I take my hat off to Oakley. I mean, he really has done his research. When I remember when he joined this industry and we had these conversations... And he did ask a lot of questions, I have to say. Uh, and this is what's manifested from it, is this amazing level of inspection. You know, he makes a really valid point about the water heater. They're, they're, in a con they're inside furniture, the boiler, and inside a big plastic box. You can't see the flame in there unless you start taking it apart. <laughs> Believe me, you don't want to be doing that. I spent a whole day learning how to do that, and I... I I don't like doing it. Putting them back together is the challenge. But you can't even see the flame. So the whole test around, you know, is your flame blue? I can't see it. So how do you know if your boiler is generating carbon monoxide? And yes, that will flew to the outside world. But, you know, what if it's leaking? And, and so it, this is a really, really sensible test. Um, I found it fascinating. The, the other area is electrical safety as well. Uh, so, you know, we you can buy the little three lighted, um, three LED lights that you plug in, you know, and it tells you if you're live and neutral around the wrong way. That's a really good test. But there's another test which uh, you should have done every three years, which I don't know why, but the industry just doesn't really talk about it. It's called the EICR, the Electrical Installation Condition Report. And this is something that you should have done every three years. Now, I've I've never encountered a motorhome dealership yet that's doing this. Now, that doesn't, say, doesn't mean to say that they're not doing it, but I don't think that this test is happening. And so what I wanted to do today in this podcast was really raise awareness to the listener of the EICR. This is an NCC, National Caravan Council, uh, recommended test that is done and carried out on an NCC-approved motorhome or caravan so these are vehicles that have come into the uk or built in the uk that are recognized by the ncc as fit for purpose in the uk that includes european built motorhomes or caravans they are assessed by the ncc and they have their little ncc badge on on the side of them by the entrance door and this is a test that the ncc recommend you have done every three years and it i'm intrigued as to how many workshops are doing this and i'd love to know if any consumers listening to this have heard of the eicr this was oakley's view on it now okay. there's a new test is it new it's not new and i love your i love your hesitation it's not new but hey this industry doesn't talk about it so no 
therefore it feels new. Um, so if you've got a caravan or motorhome, perhaps the best place to start is to open the wardrobe door and read the stickers that are inside. And if it's been an NCC approved vehicle, um, which most of the, the manufacturers are, especially the UK ones, there's usually a sticker inside that says you have 230 volt mains electricity in this vehicle and every three years we recommend that this is checked um, it's not legal but hey you're driving your vehicle down the motorway wouldn't you want the electrics checked properly so um, in a service we'll look at the appliances we'll check they're running up okay and they're all operating correctly and we'll check visually the cables that we can see but hey there's cables that run under the floor in some vehicles up the walls sometimes over the ceiling and they're buried you don't see them they're inside how do you know they're okay? How do you know somebody hasn't put a screw through something? How do you know something hasn't moved and now there's furniture resting on it and the furniture is rubbing against some flex and the flex eventually rubs through? So the only way you can do that is by doing a, it's called a PIR EICR check. It's a, and we have one here. A PIR EICR. Yeah, I know. Periodic inspection report yeah. or uh, electrical installation Stations. condition report. There Depends who you speak to and how they're going to describe it but basically um, this is the outcome if you like but the process is to go through the mains electric uh, system to make sure it's safe fit for purpose still operating correctly and this is about checking continuity of cables insulation of cables where you can see them but checking the cables with the right equipment where the cables are hidden Correct. Is that right? Yep, so we'll be checking that insulation to make sure it works correctly, even if you can't see the cable itself. So we'll be putting a charge down there and we'll be making sure that uh, the insulation is safe and it hasn't broken down over time, which it is. It's going to be plastic or rubber and materials fail after a period of time. So it's really important that they're still doing the insulation process. Well, we, I remember we bought a house and it had rubberized <coughs> cabling in the house, TRS it was called. And the, it, the live and neutrals were basically pretty much touching each other where the insulation around the cable had crumbled away with age and I am I'm amazed that houses don't have to have this test um, and I admire the fact that you're doing this it's an, currently for you an option isn't it to offer the customers to have this test is that fair AWS are really keen that we uh, educate consumers so we have this conversation with every single customer that drops off and it takes some time but we feel that the customer is then informed and the customer can make a choice whether it's something they would like to buy or not buy. It's about three hours work, so it's not cheap, but it's then peace of mind that you know it's okay. Um, you know, if, if you're going to take your children in the vehicle, your grandparents, your grandchildren, don't you want to know it's really safe and it's all up together? I, I think you should. Um, so, so yeah, it's every three years and uh, probably our take take up on it is probably two in ten customers at the moment will wow. say yes please um but we're offering it and then having a conversation about what does this mean and i think a lot of people are not so. but for you as a service center your staff have had to go through electrical training haven't they to do this that's a hassle for any service center where you know there's more work to do more costs and i mean i can understand why lots of places are not offering this service at all two in ten though that's not very many is it at all it's not very many but it's it's better than nothing well it's two more than there were <laughs> <laughs> and you know there's two vehicles in every ten that are out there that are all all okay you know if you if you were buying a motorhome wouldn't you want this in there yeah absolutely surely you would even if it was a well private sale surely that it's about education isn't it it's about should do people understand this and do they want to work on it themselves well hopefully not you wouldn't fiddle around with your mains electric at home would you so so get a professional to look at it get it checked out make sure it's okay there we are eicr are you feeling educated keith p-i-r e-i-c-r <laughs> you've got it it's all an acronym it's all an acronym but it's so important isn't it i mean two in ten that's 
that isn't very many, is it? It's not. No, it's not. It's twenty percent. Yeah, <laughs> good maths. Eighty yeah. percent of people don't have it done. Put it in those percentage terms, and it's shocking. But I think it's a vast majority of people have never even heard of it, including the service centres. That's what I find remarkable. It's the same sort of thing that you have in your home when an electrician comes in and certificates letting properties and stuff like that. For letting property, yeah. But when did you last get your house electrics inspected? Absolutely. You know, I mean, that is a true story. We bought this house and it had to have a rewire. And and the estate agent, you know, we commented, oh, great, you know, thank you. You sold us a house, we have to spend thousands of pounds on it. He said, every house in every street in this area needs a rewire, Matt. <laughs> you know, and, and to thought that was normal. But in your motorhome, that's so crucial, as we say, with driving down the road, rattling stuff loose, you know, connections can break apart, cables can be impacted. So it's really important you get this stuff done. So... Go and find out from when you're going for a habitation check, there really is value in getting paying an expert to do one for you and ask them how are they going to check your CO and how are they going to check your electrics. And if you're buying a motorhome, then do ask for the habitation history. It matters. It matters for us as a dealership when we're buying one in, if we're going to sell it. It matters to you as the consumer when you're buying one. Ask the question, what habitation history does this vehicle have? What damp checks does this vehicle have? And has it had damp? It's not the end of the world if it has, but then how has it been repaired and has it been repaired? That's the really important part. So I would encourage you, please... Don't just assume you can do this habitation check thing yourself. There definitely is expertise that goes into carrying out a great one. And that's what this is all about, is going to a great service centre, I believe, like Bristol Caravans, that will do a great job for you. What's this going to cost me then, Matt? Well, here's Oakley to tell us more. I asked him. Just tell me, what does one cost, a habitation check cost, from you guys here at Bristol Caravans? So habitation service is uh, under £250. And Brilliant. That, that, that's it, fairly fairly standard. Um, yeah, it's it's under 250 And of course, there's loads of other services you offer here as well. Just yeah. give us a quick rundown. So we're a one-stop shop, so we like to position ourselves. Whatever the problem is with your caravan or motorhome, we'd love to help you with it. Uh, for motorhomes in particular, we do engine chassis services, um, MOTs, uh, the EICR that we talked about during the day, um, uh, damp repairs, accessories, all sorts of things from solar panels through to self-leveling systems. Um, whatever the problem, uh, get in touch. Uh, the website is bristolcaravans.com and um, it starts with a conversation. You know, what's the problem? How can we help? So there you have it. That's a little insight into what's involved in a habitation check, but more importantly, why you would bother having one. I think it's about educating yourself on the equipment being used, the expertise being put to play, and the knowledge that the engineer has that's going to do your habitation check. Sure, you could do one yourself. How comprehensive is it going to be? You could pay a mobile engineer to do one, and there are people out there doing them for 80 quid. Uh, you could do that as well. You could come to a place like Bristol Caravans, who I think are absolute gold performers, uh, who, sure, charge more money, less than £250. But for the peace of mind, knowing that your gas, electric, and all of the systems in the motorhome are safe, performing correctly, surely I think that's worth every penny. And of course, not everybody is around the Bristol area, so uh, check around your area for people who do the habitation checks and don't be afraid to uh, ask for references. Yeah, How are you going to do these checks on my vehicle? What tools are you going to use to do my carbon monoxide check? Have they heard of a cane meter? <laughs> <laughs> what? Or a- What's that? It's worth saying as well, Bristol Caravans have got a campsite. They've got two CLs there. So if you are travelling, you could stay over. They are great. They're really good. CL? Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, certified location. There you go, you see. <laughs> a caravan and motorhome club site. Yeah. But they will allow you to stay as well. They have a campsite. So you can stay if you're having work done. You can camp there. Fantastic. Okay, so that's habitation checks for you. Hope that is giving you tons of information. Remember, you can always listen to the whole thing again if you missed anything. Let's delve into Matt's questions. Shall we? <laughs> well, we've had a question from Scott at Ask Matt. Here he is. Hi Matt, my name's Scott. We're just buying our first motorhome and in the process of trying to insure it. Uh, we've got some no claims bonus on a car, but it looks like uh, with motorhomes we go back to zero again. 
it'd be great in one of your podcasts if you could do a feature on insurance especially for newbies like me and let me know is it best to go with a specialist insurer or is it best to go through one of its companies that say they do motorhome insurance as well be good to know thanks very much now we have covered this in the past uh, haven't we matt but it's always worth repeating it is definitely in fact we do have a an episode planned uh, with specialist motorhome and caravan insurer Caravan Guard. Uh, we're interviewing them at the show this week. So uh, stay tuned for that. That will be coming very soon. But in terms of your specific question, Scott, thank you. Uh, you're right. No claims bonus often can't be transferred from a car or motorbike onto a motorhome. Uh, it seems daft, doesn't it? Because you're driving. It's, um, it would seem reasonable that you could. But the insurance industry generally doesn't do it they may take into consideration that you've got full no claims bonus on a car but often a motorhome is an additional vehicle to the family car and so you often haven't got any no claims bonus to transfer anyway but there are some people an increasing number that are selling the car and replacing it with a camper van and that's becoming that alternative but that no claims isn't transferable it seems to be a bit of a regulation from the insurance industry uh, and a attack that they take doesn't seem very fair to me. I will ask Caravan Guard why. Uh, but you're right about specialist insurer. I always recommend that people go to a motorhome specific insurance policy rather than a generalist like a supermarket policy. Um, yes, you can cover the road risks, but the issue is one of if 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 the vehicle is written off, then it's not a van. It's a motorhome. It's a camper van. So it's not worth. £8,000, it's actually worth £40,000 because it's recognised by the insurer as a camper van and therefore it has that higher value. You're also insuring against loss from a hob fire. If it's a van policy, they're not going to recognise that it had a hob in it and it it failed and caught fire. Um, So back to habitation checks, get them checked. Uh, and, And interestingly, I've noticed that more insurance companies are asking for a habitation check to be done every year as part of the insurance policy, never mind the motorhome manufacturer, but the insurer is asking for it as well. So I, I would say go to a specialist um, and rather than you know a comparison site, I would do some research around motorhome and caravan insurance. There's lots advertising at the show and Google will be your friend in terms of finding them. And always remember that insurance companies are insuring risk as well as the uh, nuts and bolts of the vehicle. So that all plays a part. Christopher Cates in Keithley has been in touch, Matt. He says, I heard your excellent talk at the Manchester Caravan Show recently. I was wondering if you'd ever done a podcast about buying your first motorhome. If you have, can you point me to it? Many thanks, says Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for coming along to the Manchester show and for watching the talk. Um, Yeah, we've done several, actually. We've done one on choosing the right motorhome. Uh, We did one as well on buying a motorhome dealership versus private and the pros and cons of both. Uh, We also did one on the essentials to get for your first motorhome holiday. So whether that's whether you're buying one or hiring one. And we've also done one on the real costs of motorhome ownership something I'm talking on at some of the shows this year. So, yeah, there's lots there to get your teeth into. If you go to the motorhomemat.co.uk website, uh, and there you will find all the episodes, and you can tune in to any of them really easily. Yeah, have a deep delve. We've done loads and loads and loads. (laughs) So you're going to be at the Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show. Starts tomorrow. You're going to be there all week giving out advice, aren't you? We are, yeah. We have our own stand in Hall 4. So if you've got questions you want to come and ask, then head on over. I'm on the stand throughout the week. Uh, And then on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I'm actually on the Advice Centre, which is a area dedicated to people who've got questions. And there's a series of people on on that stand throughout the week. Friday, Saturday and Sunday, you'll find me on there. So if you've got a question, then come come and ask. And if not, just come and say hello. And if there's a ticket available, there's still a discount to be had, isn't there? (laughs) Always a discount to be had. Just because you listen to the podcast. If you go to ccmshow.co.uk and enter the discount code MAT, there's a few pounds off a ticket. Fantastic. So how do people... 
See more of the Motorhome Map podcast on YouTube and also get in touch. Yeah, we're on YouTube. There's a whole load of different content on YouTube as well as the podcast itself. Just search Motorhome Matt, or you can go to our own website, motorhomemat.co.uk, where you'll find details of all of the episodes and where you can listen to it. If you've got a question for us, we'd love to hear from you too. Motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. And if you are listening on Spotify or Apple, please leave us a five star review and a comment. We love to get them. Thank you.